Hello, people. Welcome to our little podcast. It's time to introduce ourselves. You probably know one or two of us. So, Slinky, Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Slinky, uh, AC YouTuber with Ethan and all of them. So, yeah. Yeah, we're like we're the underdog sort of thing, really. But you know, we're rising. Yeah, slowly, but yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, we are. We are sort of still. I'm still an underdog, and I've got about what one point four thousand subscribers. Hey, you grow so ridiculously quickly. I know. Unbelievable. I shared my channel to a couple of forums a while back. I stopped doing that about I don't know a while back now, and it still grows. So I don't think that actually had any reason for the um. The growth. No, it could be because you troll them. Um, yeah, it could be lasers and live streams. So much. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> you get so much exposure when lasers are like going, Ethan, it's got to be Ethan. It was like, who's Ethan? So they go check you out. And yeah, no, that they probably like check the comments and look at the channel from there because I troll so much. <laughs> and this, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in, you know, Tynamite, I'm actually in his recommended box now. Seriously? Yeah. Nice one. That, that, he's, he's a good YouTuber in China, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's great. That story he told yesterday was hilarious. What one he told? The one that... The bike. The bike. Let me think. And like, like uh, your man bailed from the bike. Oh, right. Were you not there? Uh, Were you not there? The stream? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was there for the entire thing. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and I got, I, I made it into it in like the, the last forty minutes or so. <laughs> I was the center of attention. <laughs> Look at now. Hashtag what was it? Hashtag Ethan joins. Ethan joins. Yeah, that's got to be a thing now. That's got to. It is a got, thing. <laughs> well, we've got to make it bigger. Yeah. Hashtag Ethan I'll joins. I'll end up in every stream soon. <laughs> Like go on to like um, go on to Syndicate's channel and put hashtag Ethan joins. <laughs> when their lives, when Ubisoft are live streaming AC. Hashtag Ethan joins. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you just hear like these angels, like you know the angel like chorus thing. Yeah. And then I appear out of nowhere and start talking <laughs> about old men caressing each other with sunflower oil on their hands. <laughs> like. <laughs> I told that story yesterday, but anyway, what is what are the topics at hand? Um, <laughs> I've set him off on one now. It's going to be difficult. All right, I'll try to stop. Okay, um, <laughs> E three. Just talk about E three, I guess. Um, yes. Should we start off with AC? I guess. Yeah, we'll start off with Assassin's Creed. Let's start off on our strongest foot, like we're walking onto a ship. Okay, so um, are you hyped for AC this year? Uh, Syndicate? Yeah. I can't say that I am. I mean, Unity last year was a major letdown, and by that I mean a bigger letdown than Assassin's Creed 3 was for me. But Assassin's Creed 3, I was satisfied with it to a point. Mm -hmm. But now, how, but however, it's just, it isn't, it isn't. It isn't the same as it used to be. The hype train used to be so rich, and every time there was a hype train, the game was let down. I made a video yesterday addressing this. You know how I said um, basically it's like Black Flag all over again? Yeah. So the game's probably going to bring the series back to its feet, but yeah. that's because people weren't expecting anything of it. Not same because thing. the game is necessarily good, like Black Flag. It was good, but nobody expected anything from it. And that's why it was so good. That's why Assassin's Creed 3 and Unity weren't liked by so many people. They were expected to be good, but they were letdowns. Same kind of thing with AC1 to 2, isn't it? It was just AC1 was kind of let some people down, but still quite a big fan base I, for it. I, I honestly it, think that Assassin's Creed 1 wasn't bad. If yeah, you look it was, at it, if the, the Assassin's Creed 1 was released this year, I'd have committed suicide, but, you know... It, it wasn't that bad for its time, really. Yeah, you look back and you think, okay, well, that was 2007, you know, just, yeah, it was it, good it for its time. It is almost 10 years ago now, it's eight years. Yeah. It is a long time ago. Um, I was just thinking that there's a certain few elements to syndicate that I'm a bit sceptical about. Yep. 
uh, like the grappling hook, is that going to turn into a, is that just going to completely take away the parkour? Because I love climbing buildings in the games, but I was wondering, is it just going to be, well, I couldn't be bothered climbing that, just shoot the grappling hook, whatever it's called. And can it be, can it be overused? Like, is there, you have to buy them or do they recharge or what? Like, uh, the grappling hook, um, well, I, I reckon it's going to be just, I just think it's going to be like, you know, the grappling hook can just cause, how yeah. it's basically unlimited and you can do whatever you want with it. I believe it's going to be like that, really. I believe what happens is it's not going to be like a rope dart because basically it fires out of his gauntlet and then, mm-hmm. it, then he sort of like reels it in to pull himself up. Yeah. So it goes back into his gauntlet and he can use it again and again and again because it just goes back in where it came from. It, it, it's the same wire, everything you do. But what I don't understand is the zip wire in the demo. It's seemingly one end attached to thin air and the other yeah. end attached to a rooftop and it still managed to withstand like Jacob as he slid, slid down and air assassinated that dude. It's like, what? Yeah, what? I, like, you know when he shoots it, does it go off in two directions or what? Like That's what I didn't really understand. Uh, I do believe he fires one in that way and one in the other. And when that happens, I don't understand. It doesn't go back in, so yeah. Logic, don't question it. Don't it's like, it. um, I can see why they brought it in because the streets were are really wide in London, especially around the more richer parts. It, yeah, it's basically an opportunity for more bear beast mode takedowns, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, like in Revelation. And... <laughs> it's an assassination technique, and it's yeah. also quite good with infiltration, I believe. So, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah, like, did, do you remember when the original screenshots leaked and he he kind of shot it up into there and kind of swung in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'd... could be quite interesting. It doesn't look too bad. No, um, the carriages is another thing I'm a bit skeptical about. Yeah, I know what you mean. Is it going to take away from running around the city? Is it going to be like Grand Theft Assassin's Creed or what? Like Grand Theft Templar. <laughs> I just like, Grand st- Theft Juno. Grand Theft Juno. <laughs> yeah, that one. Why, why Juno? <laughs> I don't know. Juno. Juno. It's, it, it has to be the sass. And Juno is the sass of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> She's like the only character who lets you down year in, year out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take over the world. Oh, wait, I'm not powerful enough yet. Yeah, I know. But y- you are 70,000 years old. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll be powerful in 20 70, years. 70,000 years time. of experience. Still no more powerful than a regular human. <laughs> a human in a really, really drapey-like robe and a weird, like... Oh, get it. How can anyone hold up that hairstyle where basically they have hair going out to, what, the past past the, the door, basically? <laughs> so, so they've got, like, a two-foot, three-foot hair span. Like wow, yeah. <laughs> Juno, um, what else is there about Syndicate? Um, do you reckon that it, it will have a good story? Um, I'm not actually sure because it's it, the hype train is very much so like Black Flag. Like Unity was very much so like Assassin's Creed Three and Assassin's Creed One, and Assassin's Creed Black Flag didn't have the best of stories. And that was after a really dull hype, and I don't know why I'm relating it through that, because it makes no sense whatsoever. But yeah. I don't actually know, because there's no way of telling whether it's going to have a decent story, or if it's going to be like Black Flag and just be all about the gameplay and the bear, the bear Arab cash. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, do you know Darby McDevitt, the writer of Black Flag? Yeah. I think he's writing Syndicate, I, th- I think he is, because... You reckon? Yeah, I looked. It oh up yeah, to he's see. very cryptic in what he posts on like Twitter and etc. Because he said um, something about the writer for Assassin's Creed Syndicate being good, and we've and he's known to be very cryptic about what he says, isn't he? Yeah, and I looked it up. I, I wanted to find out who was writing it. Was it Corey May or was it someone different? Like they had Travis Stout for Unity, and um, it said Darby with Devitt, lead oh. writer on Syndicate. You know, to be honest with you, the the, the problem with Unity on release, besides from the hype train wasn't the story at all. I think that was d- decent to relatively all right at best. Yeah. So, but it's no, it's no lower than decent. So that's not the problem. The problem was the, um, 
gameplay. So I wouldn't mind the writer for Unity being the writer for Syndicate. It's just I hope that Ubisoft Quebec do a better job than Montreal ever did because Montreal haven't brought us a good game when it comes to Assassin's Creed since what game was it you reckon? Uh, since like the last really really great Assassin's Creed game, do you mean? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, Brotherhood. Brotherhood, yeah. That, I think Revelations is quite good as well. It's, just... it's a game I've never really given much of a chance. I've played through it once and I got I didn't really like it for some reason, but I want to give it another chance. But I'll play yeah, it soon. It's, it's a very densely packed game. I mean, the city is quite large. It's uh, not as big as Rome, but the buildings are closer. It's. Mm-hmm. Brotherhood has buildings like Assassin's Creed 3. You've got to use trees to get between them, sort of thing. But in Brotherhood, there are no trees, and you've just got to use the ground and yeah. horses. So, basically, what um, the difference between Revelations and Brotherhood is, in Revelations, you can parkour around the entire map without touching the ground more than, like, once, and that's to swim across the, um, the river. Yeah. But Assassin's Creed... Two cities, Florence, Venice. Oh, so many memories. Yeah, and I was just with uh, yeah, the soundtrack, amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, I think the best soundtrack in Assassin's Creed is a very, very, very highly debated topic in gaming because Assassin's Creed Two had a great soundtrack. Dare me say it, Assassin's Creed Three had an amazing one as well. Revelations did. Brotherhood didn't even have a soundtrack. Um, I'm not sure about Assassin's Creed One, but Revelations th- Three and Two had great soundtracks. And Black Flags wasn't too bad, and Unity's, well, it was satisfactory. Yeah, it was okay, but like, I, I, I don't even, yeah, you know you said that the older ones didn't even really have it, like a soundtrack, like one. It had that kind of constant replaying music, it had like five songs, and it didn't even have a main theme. Yeah, I know, neither did Brotherhood, to be honest with you. But Brotherhood was basically two. It did have the same soundtrack, basically. Yeah. Although I do believe the um, combat music took to the soundtrack of Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed 1's main theme was ba- the chase music, I think. People just yeah. stuck to the chase music, which was... People say it's good, but I think it's really dull. and it's, it, it's, got, it's got the atmosphere in it, but it yeah. isn't. It isn't satisfactory to me. I don't like it. I think it's just... I, I think it's a waste of um, good composers, really, to be making music like that in a game that should have a good soundtrack. Because... That's the one thing that I would hate if they ever remade it. If they just used the same soundtrack, they'd need to expand because soundtracks are now a very, very... Well, what's the word? They're, important. They're important in a game. They're important in the game's story. If you can... The scene, sometimes the scene doesn't matter. You just have to get the soundtrack right and the timing of the soundtrack right. And then everyone... And then that's what makes the chills go down. It's behind the soundtrack in the background, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, um... But it's like the AC1 soundtrack was okay when you're playing the game. Like the chase theme was good when you've just assassinated someone and it's what, like, you know, get away now. It was quite intense. What do you but, think the best chase theme is in the Assassin's Creed? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think Brotherhood. I, I, I honestly think Assassin's Creed 3's Trouble in Town is a great soundtrack. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, when you're chasing Charles Lee, it gives you bare chills even thinking about it right now. It's giving me like goosebumps all over my arms and my face and, and my, uh, the, yes, yes, my I have weird facial hair. This is how it works in this world. <laughs> but is, what I like about brothers, uh, brothers. Do you know what the? I think it's called the Assassin's Escape. It was more so. It, it more so played if you called in your assassins and then you all scattered. Yeah, that was really good. Um, have you got anything else to add to that? Well, in Brotherhood, when I played it, and I played it to death, I became a multi-millionaire with Florins. I made it rain on the people just for banter. This is after I completed the game. I made it rain. And so wow. what basically I did was sometimes I actually called in assassins just because I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm the best fighter in Assassin's Creed um, gaming, but I'm not bad. And, no, and, and I'm going to be big-headed and say I'm probably better than lasers at combat. <laughs> because sometimes James just misses everything, and it's like... it. And when I watch Assassin's Creed gameplay, in general, I cannot watch it. It makes me cringe. No matter yeah. who does it, it will always make me cringe. Don't you get that? Because yeah. the character feels stocky even when watching it. It makes you cringe. 
or Even if you ever... when James plays it, it's like you, you think. I mean, James is good at the game. So are you. So are, so is like Tom. But I cannot sit there for half an hour watching a Assassin's Creed gameplay because the character looks so stocky and so bulky that you always think that the person controlling it isn't doing it quite how you would. So it yeah. makes you sort of cringe in a way. But this is with everyone, the combat especially, especially when they miss a, like, a counter, because I rarely miss counters, and that it makes me sort of go... <laughs> and Black Flag, when you get shot, Jesus Christ, it makes me cringe when I'm playing it. It makes me want to, like... What the, draw a knife to my throat and yeah, yeah I hate watching um, walkthroughs of Assassin's Creed games, especially like three. Do you know when the DLCs came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have the money to buy them at the time, so I'll probably get them when I get them on PC. But I was watching walkthroughs of it, and I was watching people like do combat, and it was and, so painful. Yeah, because, because they got hit so much, and they're making the same mistakes. You know how like you can't press like the counter kill button for the big heavy guy yeah yeah yeah. they kept making the same mistakes and i'm sitting there going oh my god you press counter and then you break his defense that's the main thing if you're going to play a game and you want to do it right that game has to be assassin's creed because otherwise it's just not going to look good because assassin's creed is really easy when you think of it in the long term even unity is quite easy and people who play it you just think why are they doing it like this it looks Why like they don't struggling? actually have any bulk in them. I mean, I can't even watch my own Assassin's Creed gameplays because it makes me physically, you know, mental. <laughs> but I'm sure everyone watching this podcast knows exactly what I mean. Yeah, the bulk of like Assassin's Creed Three, the noises when running across the building, it's very, it's very calm, and with no background music or anything, you just think, "What is this?" And when you play it, you can't really hear your footsteps, but. When you watch back, you're like, uh, it doesn't even feel realistic. And yeah. the it, the main thing that makes it so cringy is that I think it has to be the bulk in the characters. In Unity, they got rid of that, and it was the combat and the, the stealth mm-hmm. and somewhat the parkour. But there's always a reason why you can't really sit there and watch Assassin's Creed gameplay non-stop. Yeah, it's just it just feels really weird to watch gameplay. I don't know what it is. You know how they had in the Arkham Knight trailer where there was that woman who was sat with the controller basically above her head, playing yeah, it. it? Yeah. It, it, when you watch an Assassin's Creed gameplay, no matter who it's from, you think that they're holding a controller like that, pressing the wrong buttons all the time. <laughs> That's it is basically that, isn't it? It's, it's like it says like press X. All right, I just got to find X now. Yeah, exactly. It's like I got to find X. I got to find B. I got to find. This I've got to find Y. I've got to find, oh well, I've got to find circle, triangle, square, like L two, L one, R two, R one, or right trigger or left bumper or something. Oh and, god! You know, Imagine if they got those people to play on PC with keyboard. Oh, it, it is it it is a very very fiddly game. Assassin's Creed you want a controller for because it you want to be fluid and the keyboard and mouse is not fluid. In Unity, it's a great system to use because it is so simple with Unity's controls. But like Black Flag and etc., it's too bulky and too, you know, the the character's so bulky. You need a controller to be able to control them correctly. I, and when I, your um, controller's calibrated to Nvidia Shield, when it's a 360 controller, things get a bit difficult. Yeah, like I um I bought AC2 on Steam there while it was on sale. Like I've. But, four or five months ago and uh, my pc can't run it very well but i just wanted to play it anyways and i was fi- trying to figure out the controls because you know like in the the little buttons what to press in the top right hand corner oh yeah they're different on assassin's creed one and two it's a it has like the green hand and the the red hand and the other yeah. buttons it is oh. really weird it, it, even with the controller it has those hands and it's it even the controls you can never get the controls right on the up with the 360 controller on Assassin's Creed 2, it, you have to press right bumper to run when it would usually be right trigger. It's like, oh, this is not how I remember it. And you, you just can't play it because it's so, you know, annoying. Yeah. I mean, I can't really play it because it's a broken game on PC anyway, because after one point, the game just completely freezes and then you can't play it. And But you can still open the pause menu and do all that nice stuff. But the gameplay yeah. itself just freezes. Um, do you know like an EC2 though like what I found really weird is that you know how like before uh, they had you know 
kind of low profile, high profile, but they had different, you can kind of go in between like fast walking and all that. Um, I found it really weird. Did you press like W, right click and shift and space or something like that to w run? W and space to fast walk. Yeah, but like to, to sprint and to climb. Sprint press, is like, W and shift in the newer games. W, shift and space in the older ones. But really, they've got rid of the um, the high profile in the recent games. So it's basically W and shift and that's it. And space is just used to jump. Yeah. Um, speaking of like PC and all that, do you reckon that uh, they might optimize it for a change <laughs> for this year? What do you think they'll actually write the codes? Yeah. No, <laughs> I honestly think it's going to be. It's not going to be a perfect optimization because it's Ubisoft, and Ubisoft can't optimize for for a console, let alone a computer. But <laughs> the, the, I I just don't know. I think it will be all right. I think. But the, nobody can optimize quite like Rockstar can. I've noticed that recently. Every game that's come out in the past year or so has not had the best optimization. The bugs in the game have sort of broken it in a way for PC. Because yeah. I've, I've played quite a few games out of recent years that just don't run on my PC because they're badly optimized. Like the Arkham games, not the best when it comes to optimization. The Assassin's Creed, no. Um, Watch Dogs, that game doesn't even run unless you have the highest spec computer in the world. Um, other yeah, games. Cinematic, 20 frames even Call, I, I, I played Call of Duty Advanced Warfare on my PC once. That didn't run. And uh, You should be able to run you for 660, don't you? Yeah. That's more that, powerful than a PS4's graphics card. Yeah. So it should, in theory, work, but it doesn't. I think Black Ops 2 was meant to be actually a pretty good port. Yeah, but Black Ops 2 was released back in 2012, wasn't it? Yeah. That's my point. Think... It, it's, the recent, it's the last year or so since Black Flag isn't the best best optimised. Now there's 3, actually. They're, they're both a bit meh. Don't work. <laughs> Um, I watched a benchmark for three on the GTX 970 because that's the GPU I'm going to be getting, and uh, you know, like it says how much CPU cores it's actually using. Yeah, it was using 100% of all the cores, and it's only getting like 45 45 frames per second. Yeah, well, that's down to the processor, isn't it? Yeah, and the RAM. Because if you've only got about two gigabytes of RAM, you're not going to get very far with gaming. No, I don't know. I was watching this on YouTube, like. Back and when it was, was cool. <laughs> and he was running like an i5 3570K or something like that. And it was. Three, what, 3570K? Yeah. Let me have a look at the, the speed on that little thing. i5 3570K. That, that is a thing. That is a thing. Yeah. 3.8 gigahertz. Should, should run it. I mean, the processor I'm looking at is about 3.5 gigahertz. And that's an i5 4690K. Um, that's what I want to get. Right yeah, now, I'm I've getting got an i5 well. 4440, which is not quite as powerful. No. But, you know. See, you can't overclock it, can you? Well, yeah, I can because it's a quad core processor and it should be fine. But I don't want to because A, I don't know what I'm doing, and B, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to mess it up because the overclock, you'd really need to know what you're doing. The rest of it, you don't need to know squat to build a computer yourself. No. You don't really need to know anything. You can just do it. It's just put this here, there, there, install Windows OS or Linux or or some yeah. other operating system that isn't Apple because Apple probably don't sell their operating systems to custom builds. And no, they don't. I don't think so. I think it's just Linux and Windows. Or Steam OS. Steam has an OS. Yeah. That's why they have their own browser. Feisty little fudge cakes. <laughs> um, what's your? Oh, should we move on to different games actually now for E3 or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Um, impressions on Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, Battle Battlefront, th Battlefront Three. Yeah, they have said that it's not going to be as good as Battlefront Two. Basically, they said that they've removed space battles. And Which is just, stupid. The, yeah, I know. That was in Battlefront 2 on my PSP. That was just what I did for like six days straight. Battles. It was so... It felt like you were actually like immersed in it as you did it because you you felt like you were actually flying about doing this thing. And yeah. on like a next-gen platform, that must feel 
even better because it looks more realistic. It's a bigger screen. You feel the particle effect almost because the controller is so fluid, like on the Dual Fo- DualShock for you know what I mean, mm-hmm. don't you? The DualShock. Yeah. It is a very good controller, I've heard. It it is really good. Like the just even for playing like first person shooters, like the dead zone on the the analog sticks is just so much better. It feels more fluid to move your character around. Yeah, I know. Have have they moved one of the um, analog sticks a bit high? The left analog stick a bit higher up, and or are they both um, in the same place? I think they're the same. Are they? Yeah, I think they're both higher though than the PS3 one. Though. Yeah, that's, that that's okay. I mean, I didn't like the PS3 controller because it was a bit clunky and everything was sort of towards the. Um, it was towards the little groin bit you have on it, really. You know, between the two handles. Yeah, the... But I've got a PS3 controller. It's like a 360 controller. It's bulky. One of the sticks is a bit higher. The, one, the, the well, L2 and R2 are like triggers. And the L1 and L2 are like bumpers. And i got the um, just pause. It's exactly the same. Just it's a PlayStation 1 um, version of a 360 controller. Yeah. Like we we bought a PlayStation Three there for like Netflix and all that. We have it downstairs, and I was just holding the controller. I used to have a PS Three, and like if you kind of like grab the, you know, if you like, you know, the kind of grips down the sides of it. Yeah. If you kind of do that and kind of like twisted it a little bit, just not like break it, but do you know the way? Like if you hold like a three sixty controller, it feels really sturdy. Yeah, three sixty controller is a very good controller. It's very um, it fits into your hand. It's bulky and it's the that's the other problem with the Dual Shock Three. It was very small and very fiddly. Yeah, like you could actually hear it cracking, or well not cracking, but kind of creaking and all that. Like the plastic isn't properly put together. Y- yeah, I know what you mean. It it wasn't. It it isn't the best controller. I do think the one controller that nobody would ever be able to use very well has to be the Wii remote <laughs> because yeah, that but... thing drives us. To genocide. <laughs> it makes you want to go out there and kill everyone at Nintendo. It is that bad. Although the GameCube had a pretty cracking controller, and I like that one. Like, but like with the Wii controller, if you turned around, like, and you, you turned, your character would go about what what one thousand six hundred degrees in like yeah. a weird spinny frenzy, and just be going yeah. three sixty over and over again, like whoop 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 whoop, and you'd just be like, please stop, I want to play the game. It's like that connect, you know, when the connect was first revealed. Yep. And that your man did the wow. You know, do you do you know what the bottom of his shoe looks like for an avatar? What? And you just put it up, and it kind of glitched out a little bit. It's just so stupid. Like I yeah. hate motion Assassin's controls. Assassin's Creed Connect would be the best thing ever, purely because it would be an excuse to face plant the floor in your own home. <laughs> did you, I did made you see this that joke video with my friend like? two years ago, we basically said Assassin's Creed Connect, warehouse not included. And it's you can just imagine it, can't you? Yeah. You need a warehouse for that game. You don't need a room. If it's on Connect, you need a warehouse. <laughs> it's just, it, it'd be ridiculous. Like, imagine like trying to do parkour with that. Like You'd be like just in your sitting room from pretending to climb up things. Yeah. I want it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I honestly think it'll be a bit tedious and a bit, you know, all right, so you can't play this game with a broken leg. That much is certain. Anyways, back to Battlefront. We kind of got off the track there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why they, they didn't bring back Space Battles. I suppose it's because they're trying to make it their own game, and it's the first attempt at a Battlefront game in 10 years. So I suppose they're just trying to get the, I guess, the blocks laid out so that they can build upon it for sequels. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, it, I like the graphics and I like the fact that um, they're keeping some of the things from like the original trilogy in there like do you know how the like the stormtroopers or the rebels they never actually aimed they just kind of hit fired they prayed and sprayed yeah no, I mean they sort of fired everywhere and never hit you like in the film sort of thing they would yeah. shoot everywhere but where the target was <laughs> sort of like a and they'd be like stop Calm down. Please. Um, but I just don't like the idea of having air battles. That just kind of annoys me. 
Yeah, an air battle a day keeps the um, stormtroopers away. <laughs> I just don't see the point in it because it's like if you're going if you're going to put it up in up in the air, you may as well put it up in space. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, like how hard would it take just to even put them up in space? Although I, although when the game fir first announced, we we really did expect that seamlessness that Alex Amancio is always talking about. You know, where you could just be in an air battle in like the atmosphere of a planet, then go up to space in a dogfight. Yeah. Although when you go into space, I don't think it classes as a dogfight anymore. No. And I don't get it how you know how they can still shoot in space mm -hmm. when there is no like there is no G force there. How does it work? Logic. <laughs> Logic. Star Wars plasma must have. I believe they are. I, I believe they're what they, they must have some form of control in them. They're not bullets. That's that much we know. No. Uh, the, the science, science, yeah, science, science. Yeah, that, that that explains it. It's all down to pure science. Actually, I I I, I want to figure that out now. I want to look that up after now. Yeah. Um, what other games? Black Ops Three. Oh God. What the hell have they done? They they've basically amputated your character's limbs and turned them into robots. Yeah, they are I, fallen. You do realize that that's what they've done with it. That then they are not real limbs; they are robotic. Yeah. In the trailer, they they are literally voluntary limb replacements. It's like how how is this going to help when you're not killing people? You detach yeah. your arms at night and sleep. <laughs> like, you, how is that going to work if you want to make some bread and butter? You have to hold it. You have to hold it with one hand, and then oh yeah, wait no, the other hand. Okay, that, they're completely just ignore functional that. as op as normal limbs they're just mechanical oh my god i'm sick of futuristic series yeah i know call of duty was good when they focused on the the, the, you know, the world wars and stuff like that after that i lose interest and the game turns into what it turns into the third world war where nobody's using a tactical nuke no and you're like they, use... they would use them they would they... because th first of all that's the, like 40 50 years in the future, in it, mm -hmm. and they're using the same guns as we would, basically, with the exception of basically about three hundred thousand ray guns that just don't exist <laughs> in anything but the zombies mode. Yeah, zombies. That's what I'm looking forward to. I I honestly don't like the zombies. To be honest with you, I don't. I've never really played much of Call of Duty recently. Of the recent games, the only Call of Duty I actually have has to be um. Call of Duty 2. That's a really old game, and it was good. That it, that was a 360 launch title, wasn't it? Yeah. That was good, but how can you not like zombies? Like, did you play Black Ops One Zombies? Yeah, I did with a couple of friends a while back about when it was like the the thing, and I I was sat there sort of like, well, this is just. You have to work your ass off to be on the same map. And it's like, it doesn't affect anything, and I don't understand why I would need to play this to enjoy myself. Because I, I, I just don't really enjoy zombies, to be honest. I'm not a zombie person. I mean, uh, I guess some people don't like it. I, yeah, but... I know. It just doesn't strike to my. um. It doesn't strike me in any way. I mean, zombies, dead people. Yeah, I get it. Zombie games are a big, like, blockbuster opportunity for most companies. And everyone wants a bit of Dead Rising in their life, don't they? But that's, like, the only zombie game I can handle. Left yeah, 4 Dead or... and Dead Rising are, like, the best zombie games out there. Left 4 Dead is really good. I don't, I don't know about Dead Rising being the best, but Left 4 Dead is great. What about Dying Light? Did you ever play that? No, 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 I haven't played that yet. And that does look good. It's like, it's yeah. like Assassin's Creed in first person. With zombies, it's basically Far Cry with parkour and zombies everywhere, and some sort of Mirror's Edge mixed in there. Yeah, a little bit. Well, basically, yeah, Far, Far Cry, Mirror's Edge, and um, what well, and Left 4 Dead really. Is there any other games that have caught your eye for E3 this year? Um, Fallout 4 is basically the one that's taking the mantle for me at the moment. Assassin's Creed Syndicate has struck me, but I'm not over the moon about it. No, but. Assassin's well, what, what Fallout Four? That game looks 
it looks good. It looks like Fallout's never let anyone down, really. So, I guess, I suppose it's going to... It looks like it can take the mantle for the one, like, Game of the Year or something, but... The placeholder date is New Year's Eve of this year, but I do believe that it will be coming out next year, so, you know. Yeah. The, the, I presume there'll be, like, a 25-minute demo, as they usually have at press conferences but like Bethesda they always have like really long demos to show off their world do they I don't remember there ever actually being a Skyrim demo behind, besides from killing a giant from inside a tower to use that as cover that's about all I remember from Skyrim having a massive axe killing a dragon then an, and a giant and then y y the dragonborn shouting Dovahkiin and that never happened in the game he never spoke <laughs> The Witcher 3 looks like it could be game of the year because nothing at E3 looks as what's the word? It, nothing looks as good as that does. I mean, I haven't played it, but from what James says and what other people say, it, it seems like a great game. Yeah, it seems the most promising thing has come out this year. There's... Yeah, I mean, I'm hope I'm hoping that there's something better comes, but that's because I want I want like I I like games coming out that just uh, towards the year like E3. I like to be excited for something. E um, the Witch 3 did excite me quite a lot, and it looks great. Especially with those two times maximum hair tessellation. Geralt looks like half his hair lost its gel. Um, but 16 times maximum hair tessellation is just bay. It is bay. But well, I, I just hear... This, this, I think this whole NVIDIA thing is getting a bit ridiculous. Like, Do you remember the when, in, when AC4 came out? Yep. And they did like an NVIDIA video showing off the new smoke effects. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I, I could have sworn Snoop Dogg was smoking there. <laughs> Snoop Dogg was smoking weed every day with those smoke effects. Have you seen yeah, the 3D can... smoke effects that you can get with NVIDIA GPUs now? It's like, who w wants a 3D television just for that? I haven't seen them, but to be honest... You need 3D like a really gaming... high-end graphics card and, you know... In Assassin's Creed yeah. 4 Black Flag, there's like a 3D thing. And Batman Arkham Origins, that's a 3D thing. That game ain't very well optimised either, and it doesn't really work. Hopefully Batman Arkham Knight, which comes out later this month, is going to be good, because that could be Game of the Year. Like, I, Arkham City was, like, sec second to Game of the Year only to Skyrim back in yeah. 2011. And, I mean, Skyrim um, was um, a Bethesda title that was just... It was outstanding back then. And with all the mods that has come out since, it is I, it is one of two things. Well, it's two of one thing. No, it's two of two things. It is great, and it is ruined. It's great, but it's ruined. Why? Hang on. Why do mod? Are you saying that mods ruined Skyrim? No, I'm saying that some mods made it amazing. Some mods killed it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I suppose like the graphics mods or the EMBs general... made it. So it made it beautiful. The EMBs and the um, etc. But I, I never installed one because I used Clements of Tamriel Overhaul and some of other saturation mod that made it like, you know, I made it so it made it vibrant and I made it more contrasted because the gate the world is very bone dry to start with. It's not very contrasted. So I yeah. had to install a couple of mods. And when I did that, I said, Oh, let's install some quest mods. This this is an idea I'll later regret. I installed quite a few, then I installed some armor mods, and then I installed some other mods, and now I can't play the game because I got about 200 mods. Oh, wow. And I, I can't th really go back to it because I damaged the load order. So, you know, I've got to sort that out, otherwise it won't work. And it lags to death now, so I've got to, like, delete everything, and then it should be fine. But the thing yes. is, with that, then you break the game because it's missing the files. Because yeah. some mods actually replace the game files. Oh, seriously? Yes, yeah, so I've got... So basically, I have to reinstall the game to solve, it, to solve that. That's a bit bad. That's, that's, that's terrible. They shouldn't mess with game code or game files. Yeah, I know, but that's what, that's what some mods do. Some mods are meant to enhance the game through the code, like um, speed and etc. And I, I find those mods to be all right. But you need a script extender to be able to do things and not end up with a really bad... Um, game, luckily for me, I have one of those, but still, the game does get broken. The game is broken on release anyway. The game yeah. has game-breaking bugs. Like, it has gameplay, like, ruining bugs where they can't play forward. Like in the DLC, if you read the book before you're ordered to by the quest log, 
in this Dragon Ball DLC, the first book you come across. If you read, if you don't read that before you get the um, objective to do so, then you'll just be sat there looking up at some guy for about two hours as he does nothing, and then the the game crashes probably. His Skyrim was very bad. It's like my my friend he um he played Skyrim on three sixty like so much, but whatever way he did the order of his quests, he can't finish it. But he was so close to like one hundred percent in the game. There's no one hundred percent in the game. Because there are so many random quests which just keep replenishing. Because Seriously? the same quest replenishes after and over and over again. And you just, like it's Dark Brotherhood or Thieves Guild. You always get other things to do. There's always something to do. You, nobody can ever get that 100% complete. Because what they do is they sort of, with everything in it, it is just so much to do that they can't actually get that far. Yeah. I suppose, <laughs> but anyways, what happened was that he... The way he did the order of the quest, nothing else showed up. Yeah. No matter what he did, so th he couldn't do anything else in the game but just walk around. Uh, did they kill everyone? I don't know. I can't actually. really kill everyone. Some hmm? people are just immortal. And stuff. Yeah. Uh, if they're kind of characters that are important to story, then I just... Hmm? If they're essential in Skyrim, they went down to the knees. Yeah. If yeah, they yeah. if they were essential in Oblivion, they got knocked out. If they were essential in Morrowind, they died. And Seriously? you get a notification saying that you have doomed the world, basically. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it says continue um, in this doomed universe or reload, basically is what it said. Would you, would you actually actually would you rather for like a Fallout with Fallout Four? Would you like a system where you can actually kill off characters, or would you like to keep it that keep it like with Skyrim? I like a multi-choice system. Yeah. Um. Actually, do you know Dishonored? Is that made by Bethesda? But Dishonored isn't made by Bethesda. It is just published by them. All right, because Bethesda. Oh, I was going to say Bethesda too. Dishonored Two got leaked last night. Did it? Yeah, um, the the devs accidentally live streamed uh, talking about Dishonored Two. <laughs> Dishonored Two, I don't see how that gets a leak because it adds closure to the story. Yeah, I, I'm gonna double check that now because I was watching. Do you know Call to Mush, the the YouTuber that does like benchmarks and all that and PC builds? Mm. I suppose. Yeah. On oh my god, how's it dishonored too? Looks like they have leaked dishonored too. I'll have to make a video about that at some point. Yeah, because you you really like it. you really like all those kind of dishonored is a great Bethesda, game. I, mean. I don't care what anyone like James says about the game. It it is amazing. It is a very it is unlike Assassin's Creed. The game is actually an Assassin's game. Yeah. Um. That's what I miss about AC. Like AC Unity did this pretty well, where you took where AC you assassinated. AC Unity was an assassin's game. There is no doubt about it. Like but, Three was just. But Dishonored is one of the best assassins games going out there. Yeah, I never played Dishonored, and I need to. It's like it's a revenge-driven plot. Oh. Where your characters are mute, but he is so badass in what he does. Yeah. Because he's he's basically like a magician. Because cool. he has a gift. Uh, kind of like um, Bioshock, is it? And we anyway, like Bioshock. He's very. It's very much so like Bioshock. It's just you know. Um, is there any other games from E3 that have caught the eye? Do you reckon Arkham Knight will get some sort of demo, seeing that it's so close to release, we, or even a trailer? Have we not already seen a demo for Arkham Knight? Yeah, but do, do you reckon it'll be one that's actually at E3 this year? I, I can't tell you because I don't know. But. I hope that we get to see something about, you know, the, um, I would like to see something about it. Yeah, maybe make some sort of big reveal or... What time did Dishonored 2 get leaked last night? Um, I'll link you the video actually while, while we're here. I, um, I, I just want, I just want to know because I've got, I, I just, I, I just like time-wise, because I want to know if I've actually missed something, because I was... Mm -hmm. 
Must have been an American last night because I wasn't up at that time. No, it was quite late, I think. Like, this video went up kind of late. Hang on. Pause. Seems Don't absolutely want legit with, with a double I. Here we go. I got I got the video here. I'll see if it's like a see if you put like an article in it or anything. Um, Seems legit. Yeah. It was on Jewel Shockers. Um yeah, there's an update to this story now. What is it? Come on, let me have a look. Uh, Sonored to leak. Let's have a look. Fourteen hours ago, that was eleven PM here. No, I was up at that time. I've missed something. I have. I have missed something. Is there a website? Or is there a video on it? Because I don't want to, like, interrupt the... Oh, uh, look at this. This is Bay. But it can't be about Corvo, because Corvo has been, um... Uh, but there's that incidentally went live on Twitch and we were discussing the conference. Dishonored 2 is happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to print screen that because I have to. I'm going to put it in Sarah Straw Plus to use in my video I'm going to upload later about it. Yeah, it's like, you know, well done to them anyway, you see. Do you actually <laughs> do that? Bethesda aren't that stupid. No, they were deliberately I... doing it and they were pretending that it was accident. That That's what I think. <laughs> Bethesda aren't that stupid. I it suppose. is for sure. Um, I'm trying to think about any other games. Actually, do you reckon there'll be something major for a syndicate this year? I know we're going back to AC. I know we said to move on, but oh, something I've I don't know. I can't... It's it, it, it's a game in itself. I can't that I I don't know anything about. And the less we know before release, the better I think. Because yeah, Unity. We knew everything about Unity before it was released. I even estimated that Elise would die. Spoiler alert. But you know. yeah. Yeah. That was pretty obvious, though. It was. It, yeah. Because, you know, the moment Arno kissed Elisa on the balloon, it's like, oh, great, now we know she's going to die. Because yeah, it, it just reminds me so much of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Have you seen that film? Yeah, I've seen it. Another spoiler alert. It's exactly like that. They get back together. Then, the same day... <laughs> it's a big cliche, really, isn't it? It is very cliche. It's just like, you got to be joking. Are you even human, mate? Hey, do you know what I found really stupid was that? Do you know when did you played Dead Kings, didn't you? Dead Kings? Yeah, I did, but I couldn't play it because it was broken, more so than the actual game. <laughs> did you see the bit where the woman that looks like a Lees? Yeah, she didn't even look like a Lees, to be honest with you. No, but she had the exact same clothes on, same hairstyle, and she ran the same as a Lees. Yeah, well, the Ubisoft can't really model women different from each other, apparently, so, you know. I'm using that against them now. Because they said mm -hmm. that the reason they don't have a female protagonist is because they aren't, can't animate them too well. But we all know the truth behind it, don't we? Yeah. They, base, they, they just think they can sell more from the male protagonist. Which, I understand what they're saying, but it's, it's crap. I mean, look at Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider excels really well, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. To be honest, I'd rather... You know how it's 75% of the game for Jacob and 25 for Evie? Yeah. I would rather the other way around. I think Evie seems more of an interesting character, at, at least at the moment for me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I just like the idea of having a more kind of silent, smarter character instead of having another typical idiot. brash, charismatic... We, we have the village idiot year in, year out. We had Arno, we had Edward, we had Connor, and... They're all the village idiot, really. Connor's too naive. Edward is basically heir for most of the game. And Arno is just... He's, he's a comedian, basically. Yeah. And then we have... Um, Ezio. Ezio. He was, he was the only one. And he started off as a village idiot as well. Yeah. He was a now, bit, he was a bit heir as well, in my honest opinion. Not what do you mean by toward, airy? Not towards, not towards like the um, end, but the start. He was definitely quite stupid. <laughs> yeah, he was very brash yeah. and very stupid. I reckon. I reckon yeah, just... they've, every Assassin's Creed character has its flaws. Ezio's were just executed so well that we were actually quite blind to them. Yeah, and I understand um... that because we at least got a good character out of Ezio. 
we didn't get that from most other characters. I mean, Connolly got a... We didn't get, like, the, um, a character per se. We, we, we got a body, basically. A body to kill people with. I oh, know, I like Connor. I, 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 I think he was a... Um, he could have been a lot better. There was yeah, something about like... him that just didn't work. Yeah, I... I... I respect your opinion, but I just don't like when people give out to say or or, or say, you know, say Connor or Arnold or Edward is a bad character. I don't see him as a bad character. Deal. I just I just see him as a bit of a, a disappointment. Really, is all because he's not. He wasn't. What's the word? He he couldn't really relate to him. I couldn't relate to him. I could I could relate to why he was doing it. I could understand, but I I didn't really necessarily. There wasn't a reason why he was so naive. It was just justice, justice, justice. And it's usually revenge, and but the thing is, Connor does claim to fight for justice, but there is a bit of revenge in there, if you ask me. He really yeah. wants to kill Charles Lee, even though Lee. it was revealed that in Assassin's Creed 3, you did you play through the game, haven't you? Yeah. It was revealed that the person who actually ordered the attack on the village was George Washington, but don't know if that was just a trick of the Templars or if that was actually legit. I'd say it was legit because if that wasn't true, they would have said, you know. Yeah, they would have revealed it afterwards. But if you think about things like, um, I don't know, you think about television series, they sort of drag it out a bit and they reveal everything later on in the series. And they have yeah. like this unnecessary, like, false hatred thing going on in the, in the meantime between finding out the truth and learning the lie, I guess. Well, yeah. between learning the lie and finding out the truth, even. And when you start to lose interest, they tell you what happened then. Her, but there's actually commented derp on their own stream when they realised they were streaming. Oh, you know, the, the, just judging by that, they, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. I, because if, if, if they didn't do it on purpose, they'd be damage, damage controlling a lot right now. They will be quite annoyed, really, because they want to keep a surprise coming. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Anything else? I should tell my friend Jack about this because he likes Dishonored. Dishonored is a game I really want to try. Uh, Stealth is really good. James says it's not that good, but I, I I've played it and I like it. Do you reckon? Do you have played the Hitman series? Hitman, yeah, I played Absolution and Blood Money. They're the only ones I actually got around to playing. I have all the other ones like ready. Is, um, do you reckon the new Hitman will get some sort of trailer this year? Well, yeah, I, I do believe we'll probably. I don't know about. Uh, they've never really spoken about Hitman, have they? They have said that they're they're making it, and this was about a, a year or maybe even two years ago. They said, "All right, we're making it, and it's going back to its roots of having." It's going back to its roots. Um, it's, it's trying to. They're tr basically the meaning. They're stopping to. They're going to stop trying to make him seem like a good person. The protagonist, yeah. like with the film, they're not gonna like portray him as a good character. No, no, well, not what I mean. You know what I mean? They're not gonna yeah. try to portray him as um, a protagonist. Yeah, he's an antagonist. No, no, he's an antihero. That's what he is. Yeah. Um. But I don't see I, him as an antagonist because that just means he's the, the the bad guy. He's still the protagonist, but he's an antihero. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Stop. They're, they're not. They're not trying to make him out to be a hero. Basically, what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can respect that. To be honest with you, I can respect that decision to make him seem like a uh, bit of a. He's a bit of a nifty character, really. Mm. That's that's I my hope that... honest opinion right now. The forty-seven is a bit. Is not. He isn't. He isn't really like. He's like. I think. I. He's not very emotion. He's not like. He's not got the emotions because he's 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 like a tank bred human, really, isn't he? Mm. He just kills. He is a killer. Um, do, do you know when like blood money? Did it have that system from Absolution that if you kill in creative ways, you got more points or you got ranked, or whatever it is? I don't actually know. I think I, th I don't think so. Because I hate that system in Absolution was so contradictory. That system in Absolution, I don't understand how people got like eighty thousand points. Because yeah, I was because... getting negative on everything because. The stealth is, um, it's not something to behold. No, it was a bit broken at times. Yeah. 
just mainly like, I mean like in terms of seeing like, guards could see you and all that's basic stealth but in terms of level design like where guards were placed or something like that yeah like do you know the mission where you have to kill your man in Chinatown yep that one yeah you had, you had to, there's a way of doing it you had to go down an alleyway I'm and you had to in a car yeah it, it was just so I never actually saw that way about blowing up a car. Blowing it. Well, I don't. I don't know how to, to get into the car, because he just seemed to sit there in the um. In like the what like the dome bit. Yeah. With everyone, like, I I just wasn't patient. I don't think. No, he actually really patient. The mission. He he kind of started walking around the place. Like he started going onto the phone with someone speaking about drugs. So what I did in the mission is I went off and I found this poisonous fish and I mixed it in with the drugs. Wow. Well. I made a video of myself derping about on that mission last year, so I'll find that. I'll, I'll find that for you. Um, yeah, link it to me. I called it like Hitma because I put I called it Hitman, but then it's like Hitma. Got, Hitma. I made it eight months ago. It's got seventy-four views. Enjoy. Don't ask. Oh shit! No, go away, guys. Try not to play audio either, but you know it's something to watch afterwards, I guess. And it is. It, it, I did yeah. basically um, kill him too hard. <laughs> um. So, have you got anything else to say about E three or anything like that? No, not really. I'm, I have. I've basically said everything that I want to talk about. Really. Same. Yeah. So, I guess we'll leave it there. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. Uh, no worries, and thanks for coming on if it ends up on my channel as well, which I'm pretty certain it will, right. but thank you, yeah. and thanks. thank me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> who's doing their famous outro? Am I going to do my outro, or is yours just simple bye? We should have discussed this. <laughs> we should have discussed um, this. Should we do the legendary seer, or should we do the legendary, um, what was your outro again? Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> right. What do you reckon we should do? We'll do. We'll do the C. Yeah. Right. Okay. Three, two, six, five, nine. Um. Right. Okay. You do your C first, and I'll do mine. See ya. See ya.